Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, I thought I would do a tutorial for new users of Plex who are discovering this app on their Fire TV sticks and their Rokus and are wondering how it might be different than some of the other streaming apps out there. Now, I've done a lot of content on the Plex Pro side of this application where you can host your own media. But what I want to do here is focus on the free media offerings that Plex has along with a lot of the other features that are unique to Plex that allow you to bring in content from all of the other streaming providers you might be subscribed to to organize your to-do list of things to watch a lot more efficiently and discover new things as well. So what I'm gonna do right now is install this from scratch on this Fire TV stick, but what you're gonna see in this video will work the same across many other platforms, including Roku. And before we dive in, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how we can maximize our Plex experience and get all of our media organized in one place. All right, so we've got the app here installed fresh on this Fire TV stick. I could skip the sign up here and just start watching the free content. But if you do want to make use of the things that we're going to be covering in this video, I do suggest setting up an account. So I'm gonna click on sign up for free here. And as you can see here, it's directing us to a website link that we can access on a phone, a tablet, or a computer. And I'll show you that in a second. Depending on the platform that you're on, you might have an option to link it with that platform's account. So for example, I could link this up with my Amazon account, which is logged in on this Fire TV stick, but I'm gonna follow this process just so uh, we have a consistent way of setting up an account across platforms. So let me get over to my computer now and set up our account. Now, when you follow the link on screen here, you're going to be brought over to this sign up page where you can type in your email address and create a password. You also, of course, can connect up with your other existing accounts if that's easier. I'm gonna click on create account here. And once that is done, we are now prompted for the number that's on screen. And this will link up our login with our device here. So I'm gonna type that in. And now our accounts are linked. And what should happen here momentarily is that we should get updated. And then we can begin the Plex onboarding procedure here, which is actually pretty quick. So let's let this load up and we'll pick it up from uh, where the next step takes us. Now, the first thing you're going to see as you set up your new Plex account is this screen that's asking you what services you are subscribed to. And the reason it's asking you this is because Plex indexes about 99% of all of the other streaming services out there. So Plex does have their own streaming, but they also get the list of things that are on other people's streaming services so you can integrate and organize everything. And the best way to get that organization done is to tell Plex what you're subscribed to or what you have access to so it knows what to include in your recommendations and search results. So for example, if I click on Amazon here, you can see there are 30 different options connected to Amazon because Amazon does provide streaming services for other providers as well. So if you are subscribed to Discovery Plus, for example, through Amazon, you'll want to select this. I'm just going to select Freevee here, which is their free tier. And I'm also going to select Amazon Prime Video because I'm subscribed to that. I am going to jump back here now and select a few other options like my Apple TV Plus. And I'm also going to go and look for uh, Disney Plus here. And we'll maybe add Netflix to the mix as well. I'm not going to add too many here just so that we can keep it simple. But as you can see here, uh, you should spend a little time on this screen getting everything set up the right way so that uh, you can best organize and find the things that you want to watch. So I'm gonna click on done now. Now what you should see next is something similar to what I have on screen here. If you don't get a landing page after you go through that streaming service selection option, what I would do is hit the home button and then just reload the Plex app. My Fire TV had a little bit of a glitch as I was setting things up. So uh, if you don't see this, just do that. Hit home, reload the app, and you should go back in and be able to get to this next stage. Now, what it's asking us for here is whether or not we want to participate in the new Plex social features. They call this Discover Together. 
And what this does is it will share with people who you are following and people who are following you what you're watching on Plex. If you're not comfortable having that information shared, you can opt out of it through this screen. So why don't we step through that right now? So you definitely want to click continue here and it'll tell you how to set up your profile and we'll go through all of that in a minute here. And I'll just click continue and then we get dropped off over here. So right now it will share my watch history, my watch list and my ratings only with friends. If I don't want to share this information, then what we can do is select this and say that we want to be private and we could turn all of this off if we want. Again, it's up to you. You have a couple layers here. You can share things with just your friends. If you're really social, you can share it with friends of friends if you want. So you do have some flexibility as to how your information gets shared out. But just be aware that uh, you do need to spend a little bit of time on the screen initially to figure out exactly what you are comfortable with. You can come back into this later if you want and change those settings, but uh, this is something important when you're first getting onboarded to know about. So now that I'm clicking finish here, uh, we are now brought to the home screen of Plex and we can start consuming media. And we're going to get into that now and see what's available for free and then we'll look at how we can organize all of this content together. All right, so now that we get all the account creation stuff out of the way, we are on the home page of Plex. I've got some free stuff that I can start watching right away here. Now Plex has a mixture of live and on-demand content that you can watch for free. And right now on the live side, we've got NCIS New Orleans playing. I've got Breaking Bad here, Hawaii Five-0, a bunch of popular shows. If I click on the channel guide, I can dive in deeper and we can scroll through what looks like an endless list of options here available to us. One thing that they've made a little easier is because they have so much stuff to watch, you can filter it by moving the cursor up to the top of the list here. So if I go over to reality, for example, that will only give me the reality uh, TV based stuff. I can click on news here and see what's going on there. I can go to some crime content if I want. And if I find a channel that I like watching, what I can do is add it to my favorites. So for example, I do like my unsolved mysteries here. And if I click on this right here, I'll tune into what's playing live. But if I click next to it, what I can do is add the channel to my favorites. And when I do that, a new filtering option will appear at the top of the screen here. So let's scroll back over. And now I've got favorites. And if I click on that, I only have the channels that I favorited. So if I wanted to narrow things down for my live selection, I have the ability to do that. But I still, of course, can look at all the channels or drill down into specific genres as well. So you do have a lot of options here for organizing live content. And this is a great section if you're just looking to have some noise on throughout the day. And there's quite a large selection of live content that gets updated quite frequently. So you shouldn't have any trouble finding something to watch live on Plex. But they've got some other stuff. So let's go hit the back button here and go back to our main menu. And what you saw just a second ago is this menu kind of pop out of the side. So when you're over the big uh, icons here, that menu disappears. So if you hit to the left here, it will come back up. And I just wanted to go over to movies and shows next because in addition to live content that's playing live in real time, you also have the ability to watch on-demand content too. So for example, right now they've got a bunch of movies. These change all the time. Uh, they have different ways that they curate the content. So for example, these are the things that people on Plex are most watch listing and we'll get to the watch list in a minute here. And if you find something that you want to watch, you can click on it and go right into that film and play it right out of the gate. Uh, you can also add it to your watch list, which I'm going to do now and we're going to jump over to that screen in a minute to remind yourself to watch it later. Now, everything in Plex allows you to dive deeper in to discover more content. So for example, we're on the movie Heat. If I scroll down here, I can go to the cast and crew, and maybe I wanna see what else is available from Robert De Niro. So I can click on his actor icon there. I'm brought to his page that Plex maintains, and I can see all of the other content that Robert De Niro is in 
that I can watch for free currently on Plex. So you can dive in deeper and see more from your favorite uh, actors and actresses uh, just by drilling through their page there. And of course, you can also uh, get some biographical information about the stars as well. So pretty cool stuff here. They also have some extras, including trailers and other things. You get some reviews. And then, of course, they have some similar uh, titles here that can be recommended. So you can really drill down uh, quite deep here to find what you're looking for. Additionally, if we go back to movies and shows, uh, we do have some ways that we can browse in other ways. So, of course, we've got all of this curated stuff here but I could go over to categories and drill down by a particular genre. I can also look at a particular studios if I go over to brands. So there are a couple of different ways to find what you're looking for. And in addition to all of that, we have a search engine here too. So I could click on search and to speed things up, I just typed in the word earth just at random to see what we could find here. And when I did that search, as you can see on our top results, we have a, a result from BBC Earth where I can actually watch this for free on the live TV option. We also have a free on-demand movie that we can pick up as well. You also have the ability to narrow your search down by a specific type of content you're looking for. So I could have it just show me the results for uh, live TV. I can also have it give me the movies and TV that are available. If I click on a movie here, it will bring us over to that movies page just like we saw before and I could go in here and watch list it, or again, drill down further. And what's also nice about this, if we go back a notch, is that things that are not on Plex are also indexed here. So for example, uh, let's pick this one, Another Earth. And if you click on this movie, what it's going to do is search through all of the different places that this movie can be played and show us where they can be played from. Now, right now, this movie is available on eight other services, and I don't have a uh, way to watch this one for free at the moment, but I can watch list it, and if it ever does pop up on something that I can watch for free, because it'll be in my watch list, I'll be able to get at it. Uh, what I'm also going to do right now is search for something that I know is on Netflix so we can see how it links up with other services. Let's do that now. So I did a search for Stranger Things, which is a Netflix-only show. And as you can see here, it's showing up on the search. And I can click on it here and dive in a little bit deeper. Now, what I'm going to do here is add it to my watch list, as we've been doing on some of these other search results that we've been going through here. And you'll also see that because I told Plex that I'm subscribed to Netflix, it knows that I can watch it there. And unfortunately, on Fire TV and Roku, they don't let you jump out of Plex and be brought over to Netflix. It's something those platforms don't allow but some platforms do allow it. So if you're on your phone, for example, you can actually select an individual episode and be brought right to it inside of the Netflix app. But the, they do actually keep a pretty extensive database of this show and all the other ones that they're indexing. And you can scroll through each season, get a summary of each episode. I can also keep track of where I am at in a season. So for example, if I hover over episode one from season four, if I hold down my remote button here, I can say mark as watched. So that way I know I saw that episode already. Stranger Things is something that I'm like halfway through the fourth season and I haven't watched it in a couple of weeks. So this is a really helpful way to kind of keep up on where things are at. So let's move on now to the watch list, which we've been hinting at uh, throughout the course of this tutorial. The watch list really is, I think, the big differentiator here between Plex and other free streaming services. Now, when I first selected here, it is currently on its recommended tab. And what will happen here is it will keep track of what you're watching. It will look for things that are coming out that are new, that are on your watch list, like a new episode of a favorite show or whatever. So this is pretty dynamic. But if you wanted access to the whole list, what you can do is scroll up to the top here and just select watch list, and that'll give you everything. So this is all the stuff that I added over the last couple of minutes here. And as you can see, we've got Stranger Things, Another Earth. And if you recall, Another Earth was something that wasn't on any of the services that I currently told Plex I'm subscribed to. So if I go up here to this filter, I can actually take things off the display here that I can't watch right now, but they will stay on the watch list. This is a basic filter here, in other words. And if I go over to 
uh, select this option called Available on Your Services, what you'll see now are things that I can watch at this moment. So for example, Stranger Things is on Netflix because we told Plex we're subscribed to Netflix. And these two films are available on Plex and I can jump over to them and watch them. And Plex is going to keep track for the media that they host, the things that I have watched, so I know not to watch them again. And I can again treat this like a to-do list. I'm gonna clear these filters here real quick and I can also narrow this down to just shows or movies. So if I just want to see my TV shows that I want to watch, I can drill into those things that way. And again, I can go through and mark off different things as watched as I go through different seasons and kind of keep track of things in that regard as well. Um, what's really neat about the watch list is that everything syncs up across all the devices that you're using with Plex. Let me show you what this looks like on my phone. So here is the watch list on the Plex app that's running on my phone. As you can see, it is identical to what we have on the television. And if you're ever out with friends and somebody says, hey, have you ever watched For All Mankind? It's a great sci-fi show, you're gonna love it. You can jump into that while you're talking to the person, add it to your watch list, and then when you get home, it'll be waiting for you on the TV. So it's a great way to make sure you never miss anything. So this watch list can really function as your personal entertainment to-do list and because their database is so extensive, most of what you are looking for will be in there, including movies that just came out in the theater. And you can set them to pop up when they are available for you to watch on one of your streaming services. But this is not the only way that you can share uh, some recommendations with friends or get recommendations because they also have a discover tab here, which helps you find things that you might want to be watching. So for example, at the top of the list here are all of the most watch listed pieces of content across Plex. So they are anonymously collecting what people are adding to their watch lists here. And you can scroll through to see if there's anything that you want to add to your watch list or actually watch as well. So for example, my kids are uh, eager to see this new movie Migration, which is out in the theaters right now. I can add it to my watch list here. And again, when it's available to watch, I will be able to tune into it on one of the services that I've connected to. Another neat feature of Plex is that you can browse your favorite streaming services without the noise. So for example, if I click on Netflix here, I've got a much cleaner interface to see what's currently trending on Netflix, see what was most recently released here. It's just easier, I think, to look at this list than it is sometimes to look at what the Netflix homepage looks like because things are always changing, things are always in a different spot. Here I've got just a much cleaner way to maybe browse around in a more efficient fashion. And of course we can search for things directly. As we scroll down here, you can see these are things from my watch list that are available on my services. We've got trailers coming up, all sorts of good stuff here. Now I'm gonna scroll up to the top here and go over to the profile section because this is where some of that social stuff that we looked at when we were first setting our account comes into play. Let's have a look at that. Now here is my Plex profile that will be visible to my friends if I choose to share it with them. And as you can see, it's got the entirety of my watch list here along with what I have watched. And the only thing we have watch history on so far is that Stranger Things episode we marked off a little bit earlier. But as you continue to consume media and add things to your watch list, your friends will get notified and then of course they can pop in and see your profile to learn more. Now you can't currently edit the profile on the TV apps, but you can do so on your phone. So if we jump over to my phone here, uh, you'll have an option to edit the profile and you can jump in there and add your bio, change the photograph if you want, all sorts of options that you have available to you there. Now, additionally, you'll be able to browse what your friends are doing on Plex if they choose to share that information with you. So what I've got here is my other Plex account. If I go over to activity, what I will see here are all the things that my friends have been doing. So I have another test account here that was watching Obi-Wan Kenobi on Disney+. Plus. I could decide to watch list this as well if I wanted to. I can see that somebody watch listed uh, Hunter, an old 80s TV cop show. I also see that another one of my friends rated Invasion. 
So you get a good sense as to what your friends are up to, again, if they wish to share that information with you. And you can decide not to share anything with them, but get things shared back to you if you want. So this could be a useful way to get recommendations, kind of in a passive function, because you can actually just see what they're up to on there. Now you can browse your friends' profiles as well. So if you go up to the People section here, you will be able to select a profile and see what's on it. So here's another one of my test accounts here and you can see what that account has been up to, what's on their watch list, and some of the things that they have rated. Now to add friends to your profile, you need to do that from the mobile app or from the web. You can't currently add them on the television. Now what if you wanted to make some changes to all the stuff that we set up? Well, let's take a look and see how we can adjust our privacy settings and look at how we can add additional streaming services to our list that Plex should be looking at. Now the easiest way to adjust our streaming services and our privacy preferences is to navigate to the right of the profile link here to these three periods when you're on a television. If you click on that, you can select your streaming services and your profile privacy settings. We'll start with streaming services. When we select this, we pretty much get the same screen that we had before, and we can go ahead and add or remove different streaming services that we need to do. If we go back up to that link though, we also have the ability to adjust the profile privacy settings that we saw earlier. So for example, now that we have a feeling as to how this works, I might wanna make my account visibility something that only my friends can see. So in other words, I've gotta initiate a friend request or tell somebody what my uh, Plex account is to have them add me. I may also decide that my profile and all my watch list stuff uh, should be limited to just my friends and I can go in here and make those adjustments as well. So you have the ability to uh, make some changes here to get things working the way you would like. One last thing to take a look at here is the ability to add additional users to your account so that you can very easily switch back and forth between what you want to watch and maybe what a spouse or another family member may want to tune into. So as you saw a second ago, I went up to my username up in the upper portion of the screen here. I'll do it again. And I have the option here to switch users. So if I click switch user, I have my username here. But if I go to the right, I can add a new user to the mix here. And I can also restrict what they can see. So I may have a kid profile that we may want to create here. So I've got an older kid upstairs that might want to tune into my Plex account here. I'll just give it a, a quick name here. We'll just call them uh, uh, D, and we'll go down to next here. And when I do this now, I've added a second profile to this account, but I don't have to go through the process of creating a whole new Plex account. I can basically attach them to this one. But now this user's profile will be unique to them. So all the recommendations, all of the sharing and whatnot uh, will be unique to this user. So we can add things to watch lists and make adjustments that won't impact anyone else in the house. You can, of course, have everyone create their own Plex accounts, but then you have to log out and log back in. So this is probably the more efficient way to do it. You have one master account and the others can keep their own watch lists as they go. So we've covered a lot here, but hopefully this video gave you some ideas as to what you can do to go beyond the basics of just streaming content and getting into things where you can organize what you want to watch around the watch list, and of course, discover new things through the discover section as well. So uh, we've got, of course, a lot more to talk about with Plex. We do one of these videos every single month. So if there's something you want to know more about, leave a comment down below. Also check out the playlist that I've got that dives into all of the pro level features of Plex that allow you to host your own media in addition to streaming it from Plex and other places. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.